Hey guys, this is Inversign's dad. Uh, Inversign died, so uh, I'm going to be taking over his channel. So, just to clear that up. So, I'm going to be teaching y'all how to do my seamless sky method. Basically, it's like the exact same thing as all the like regular sky methods. Except, this one makes it so you don't have that annoying mirroring in the middle. So, let me give you an example. I'm going to just like import one of the sky wallpapers I found online. So we have a pretty standard wallpaper. Uh, by the way, if you don't know the original method to make these skies, then I have a tutorial linked in the description. And you should check that out first if you don't know how to do what I'm doing right now. So I'm just going to put this into Cube the Sphere first. Okay, so I've gotten all six of my frames from Cube the Sphere. Uh, that's all of them. By the way, I export all of mine in 1024 resolution, just because anything more than that lags your game in Minecraft a lot. And anything less than that looks just really bad. So first what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy these three frames, left, back, and right, onto the skybox, just like normal. So that's left, back goes here. like that, and then the right goes over here, just like that. And here's where the problem comes up. I'm going to paste all three of these other ones onto the transition overlay, just like you would or any regular sky. That's the second one. Here's the front one. And there we go. So here's the issue with this. I'm going to show you the normal way of doing it, just to show you the problem with this method. So you cut half of it, paste it to a new layer, duplicate, flip, and then merge, put that layer underneath, and then using a high brush size eraser, actually it could be a bit higher, 600, and then you just erase the edge. And although this method is quick, it does not look good at all. Like, look at this, you have this huge mirrored area right here. And it doesn't look very good, especially on the stars and on these like little nebula things. They just don't look good at all. Like, you never have two stars directly next to each other in real life. So, here's what I'm going to do instead of that. I'm going to go back to this one layer with all three of these, top, front, and bottom. And I'm going to duplicate that layer. So, just to show you, this is one layer right and then i have another layer underneath it which is the exact same so i'm going to select the front square on the top layer delete it i'm just going to have the very top layer showing for right now i'm going to select the top square and then rotate it 90 degrees clockwise now i'm going to select the bottom square Rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now this might seem weird, but check this out. I'm going to take the right frame again, and then paste it where the front should be. And as you can see, it works fine. It looks like there's no seams anywhere, because there isn't. So now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move the original top front bottom layer over the top right bottom layer. And I'm going to take my eraser tool on about 400 instead of 600 and then just draw a line directly down. Right 
right about there. And as you can see, there is no mirroring at all. Unfortunately, you are reusing a section of the skybox in a different part of it. So what you can do is that you can just go to layers and then flip horizontal on the bottom layer and it looks completely different. So now before merging, I'm just going to pick one of these colors. That looks like a good color. And then just do some dots. One right there. And then one in the center of the top frame. And this just makes it like cleaner. It's just personal preference, but I like having it there because it makes it not look like it was made in a program and something that like actually could happen in real life. So now I'm going to copy each of these top front and bottom layers, or top front and bottom frames, and paste them onto my skybox. So this is top, that goes right there. This is the front, whoops, this is the front, and this is the bottom, goes right here. And already you can see that this sky looks a lot better than it would if we had used the traditional method. And that's because, like, we reused a portion of the sky in a different place so that it doesn't have the mirroring issue. So, this problem with the mirroring isn't actually that apparent when you're doing a nighttime sky. However, when you're doing, like, a daytime sky, especially one with, like, lots of clouds, then it has a very severe effect because you can very clearly see the mirroring. So I'm going to show you what the daytime sky looks like with this method. All right, so I just found this random daytime sky image online. Looks pretty nice. And you can see that if I were to like delete half of it, oh, whoops. If I were to delete half of it, take this part, duplicate it, and then mirror that, it would look really bad. So Oh, that's not exactly mirrored, but you get the idea. It would look really bad if I used the normal sky method on this. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I got all of the frames from Cube the Sphere on my files, and I'm going to import them. And they're pretty standard, so I'm going to start off with the exact same method. This is the back, so it goes here. This is the left, so it goes over here. And this one is the right, so it goes here. All right, now we just paste the stuff onto the transition overlay. That's the top. This is the bottom. And this is the front. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to show you why we wouldn't use the normal conventional method for making skies on this one. So I'm going to take half of it, cut, paste, duplicate, flip, and then. Oh, whoops. And then just erase this part. You can see that this looks really bad. Like, you have this weird mirrored bit right here. Uh, this stick pointy thing. And, yeah, it just doesn't look very nice. So, instead we're going to use my method. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then select that and delete the center. I'm going to select the top 
rotate it clockwise 90 degrees. Select the bottom, rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And then I'm going to copy the right frame and paste it in the middle. And the reason this works is just because it's just if, as if you were turning 90 degrees to the right. This is what you would see. So now I'm going to move this layer to the top, the top front bottom one. And using my eraser tool with anti-aliasing, I'm just going to drag from top to bottom. And finally, we're just going to, whoops. Finally, we're just going to take this color, or maybe this color, make sure it's full opacity, and then place a dot, and place a dot in the other part right here. Let me get like this color. And just like that, we're done. So we can merge. And the reason I do this seamless method is that although it takes a bit more effort, it's only a bit, and it looks so much nicer. So that's the top, that's the front, and that is the bottom. Just like that. Now I want to reiterate, like, you are reusing a section of the texture, of the skybox texture, so like that part is the exact same as this part. But in game, you are not going to notice that at all. It will look so smooth. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you both of these in game. Alright, so here's the night sky that we just made. Looks really nice, super clean, and uh, there is no way where you can tell where the seam is, because there isn't a seam. We covered it up. So here's the daytime sky, and it looks great as well. Check that out. And here's two other skies that I made using the exact same method. This one's actually from a picture that I took on vacation. It looks great. Kind of realistic, honestly. You can see all the waves. And then time set 18,000. Here's another one. This was actually the first one that I figured out this method with. As you can see, it looks absolutely amazing. Alright, so I hope this tutorial helps y'all. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know down below. See ya!